In this lesson, you're going to learn about how to select precedent transactions, or comparable transactions as they're sometimes known, and how to narrow down your list and then some of the key metrics that we look at when analyzing these transactions and using them in our valuation. So what you see in front of you is a list of possible precedent transactions we're going to use to value Apple. Now, the idea here is very similar to what we saw with the public company comparables from before. I'm just going to pull up that page. You saw that on the public company comparables page, we selected a set of five public companies that were similar to Apple in terms of industry focus and financial criteria, such as revenue, EBITDA, market cap, for example. And then we looked at the appropriate operating metrics and then the valuation multiples, revenue multiples, EBITDA multiples, PE multiples in this case. So the idea for precedent transactions is similar. And so what we're going to do is look at cases where one company has bought another company and figure out what kind of multiple they paid, what kind of revenue multiple, what kind of EBITDA multiple they paid for the other company, and then use that to figure out what kind of valuation Apple might get. Now the sheet you see in front of you is quite similar to the one that we initially used for screening our public company comparables. Just to refresh your memory, I'm going to pull that up. So you see it's very similar. We have name, industry, market cap, revenue, profits. We don't have quite as much criteria here. We're missing location because I've already filtered it by location. And we don't have profits or anything else. We just have transaction value and revenue right here. But overall, it's pretty similar. Really, the major addition here is that we now have time. So this is an added dimension, an added metric that we have to take into account here. The reason that the date is important for precedent transactions is because if we look at transactions from 10 years ago versus transactions today, the multiples are going to be much different. The, any kind of industry changes a lot over the span of 10 years. And so when you're looking at a deal like this or looking at a company, it's very important to use transactions that have only occurred over the past year or past two years or past three years or some kind of time frame that puts you in line with present day. So it's very important to look at the announcement dates of transactions like this when we're looking at and analyzing precedent transactions. And so there are really four dimensions we're looking at here. First off, we have the industry cut. So we're looking at technology deals, technology M&A transactions. We have a size cut. So we only want deals that were worth over 1 billion. We have a geography cut. So we only want US-based sellers. And then we have the time cut since January 1st, 2008. So we're basically looking at companies from the past two or so years here because our valuation date is early 2010. Now, in terms of actually finding companies that meet this criteria, the process that you go through here is very similar to what we saw for public company comparables. Basically, we look online, we look through research reports, sometimes equity research, and we try to compile a list of large transactions in this case, over a billion dollars that have occurred over a certain time frame. To give you an example of where we'd find this information, this is a report that I've linked to below this video. And this is from PricewaterhouseCoopers. It's called Technology M&A Insights. And basically what it is, is they go through each different industry within technology and they list out the key transactions that have taken place over the past year or two, the deal value, the transaction value, completion date, business description, and of course the buyer and seller. So they go through and actually list out all this information. So this is an example of a source that we could go to. If you look at some of the other links below this video, you'll see that I've included several other reports and several other sources we could go to to find this information on precedent transactions. When you're actually working at a bank, you may do this, but most of the time, the group that you're working in or the industry group you're working with will actually have a list of their own. So you can just consult with that. But I'm including these just to show you exactly how I found this information for these precedent transactions. So once we have a list like this set up, what we want to do here is make this a bit more focused. Because right now we have around 21 companies on here. As with public company comparables, we'd like to get this down to maybe a set of 5 to 10 or something in that range. We want enough to make the data meaningful, but we don't want to have 20, 30, 50 companies here because that doesn't tell us too much. We really want to narrow down the set of it. So what we're going to do here is take the same approach of selecting everything in our data set with shift control down arrow key 
then going to Alt DS to sort. We're going to go to sort by target industry. And we see that there are a bunch of internet transactions, IT services, semiconductors, software on here. So what we're going to do is remove the internet and IT services ones because those are not relevant. Those are not hardware companies, so we don't want to be looking at them. The business models are much different. Same goes for software. It's difficult to compare these to well, these hardware transactions and semiconductor transactions because the business models are significantly different. The mechanics of the transaction would be a lot different because they're not exactly the same industry. So now we're left with this set up here at the top. Now just to go through some of these, what we would probably do at this point is if we're not familiar with these companies, we might actually do some additional research and look up business descriptions and try to figure out which ones are most relevant. What I'm going to do here is just take out some of the ones that are not relevant and just explain why we're removing them. So the first three here are all fine. 3Com, Starrent Networks, Avocent. So these are all companies related to hardware, mobile devices, networking. So a pretty good fit for what Apple does overall. So we're going to leave those in. This one on Ericsson and Nortel. So this one's actually an interesting transaction and it's actually a very good one to use if we had enough information because essentially it was Ericsson buying the mobile division from Nortel, which is another large company. The problem here though is twofold. First off, this is a divestiture. It's not acquiring 100% of another company. It's just acquiring part of another company. Also, since it's a divestiture, we don't have any information on the revenue, EBITDA, or anything like that. So even if we kept this transaction in, it would be kind of useless. So it's not really comparable because it's a divestiture, and also we don't have the necessary information, so we're going to cut this one out. Data Domain and Sun, these are both fine to leave in. Sun is a little questionable because what they do, manufacturing computer hardware, not anything with mobile, not anything super advanced like Apple, it makes it a little bit farther away, but they are the largest transaction on this list, so we're going to leave this one in. Brocade and Foundry, again, more of a hardware transaction, semiconductor companies, so we're going to leave this one in. And then, so these last two, so these are both interesting deals, but again, not exactly 100% comparable. The first one here, Advanced Technology Investment and Foundry, this one is actually covered in one of the reports included below this video. So I've pulled it up right here. This is the PwC report where they list the top deals of 2009. Number nine on the list, Foundry and Advanced Technology Investment. So you see that this is a 66% acquisition. What this really was, was a company in Dubai teaming up with this US company to invest and create this new company, Foundry. So it's a pretty interesting transaction, but it's not really an acquisition. It's more just companies, again, kind of spinning off a division, turning it into a new company, slash forming a new company with the help of this investing firm in Dubai. So interesting deal, but again, not exactly comparable because it's not truly one company buying 100% of another company. So we're going to cut that out. And then similarly for the last one on this list, this one, if you look online, you can find press releases about this one as well. This one, again, was not really a 100% acquisition. This one was really just a joint venture between ST Microelectronics and NXP semi Semiconductors. So not really a 100% acquisition, more of a joint venture that they were setting up. So we're going to cut this one out as well. And so that leaves us with a set of six transactions here. And we'll be looking at the multiples and getting into the analysis of these transactions in the next video. But for now, that's how we go through and cut out the transactions that are not relevant and how we screen our transactions and come up with a better set here. Again, the most important points to keep in mind with precedent transactions are that the screening criteria is similar to public companies, but we have this added dimension of time. So we want to look at when the deals were announced and use that as well. As far as the metrics on the left here, the transaction value, it's not clear whether this refers to equity value or enterprise value. So we'll have to look at that in more detail as we get into the analysis. 
that is definitely important and we need to look at it for these types of transactions, but we need to dig in a bit more to figure out whether this is equity value or enterprise value. So that's how you would go through and select a set of precedent transactions. Coming up in the next video, we're going to get into the actual analysis and we'll be looking at the multiples for this set and what they can tell us about Apple's valuation and what its proper share price might be.